we are going to focus on the key points as uh, metro railways promoting low carbon uh, transportation in India. Also on net zero carbon emission in uh, metro and railway sector by 2030. As I take the name of the panelist and moderator, you are requested to make your way on the stage. We are having a person who is uh, All India Civil Service 1988 batch IRAS, Indian Railways Cadre Officer is now the Managing Director of the Andhra Pradesh Metro Rail Corporation Limited. He has been working for the last six years in Andhra Pradesh state-owned corporation dealing with four major metro rail and other urban transportation projects under implementation by Andhra Pradesh state government worth more than rupees 40,000 crores in value. I am talking about none other than Sri UJM Rao, IRAS, MD, APMRC. So please make your way on the stage and please give him a big hand as he comes up on the stage. So, thank you. We are also having the presence of a person who is senior sales manager in Emerson. He is uh, leading air conditioning and transport business initiatives in India, responsible for air conditioning business development. That includes product and sales strategies and new product introductions, developing uh, value propositions and new business opportunities at OEM sales, transport OEMs, small scale chiller OEMs, and channel business. He is a mechanical engineer from Delhi College of Engineering, Delhi, and MBA in marketing from IMT, Ghaziabad. He has a total work experience for more than 20 years in sales and business development. He began his career in Subro's auto AC company in 2002 from Noida, head office. He also worked in automotive sector more than 10 years companies like uh, Michelin India and Bosch India as key account manager sales. I'm talking about none other than Mr. Neeraj Peniwal, Divisional Manager Sales, Emotion Climate Technologies India Private Limited. Everyone, please give him a big hand. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Now going to call uh, a person who is an IRSE, Indian Railway Service of Engineers Officer, and a gold medalist engineer from IIT Kanpur. He is an MTech and IIT Roorkee be it. Shri Kumar Keshav, with the vast experience of implementing uh, Lucknow and Karpur Metro in record time, is now leading the DBRITS Operations India team for efficient and cost-effective operations and maintenance of India's first delhi ghaziabad Merit RRTS corridor. Previously as director in project and planning at Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, DMRC, he has been credited with successful completion in commissioning of various important corridors in Delhi Metro. He held the prestige of Nations High during the, uh, 19, uh, during the 11th Commonwealth Games to 2010. When he had commissioned Central Secretariat Badapur Metro project on 3rd October 2010, just on the day of start of the Commonwealth Games, he, when approximately 7,000 people will travel by Delhi Metro to reach the main venue of uh, the global sporting extravaganza, the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium. He is none other than Sri Kumar Keshav, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, Dashik Behan. He is DBRRTS Operations India Private Limited. Everyone, please give him a big hand. Now is the time when I am going to call the moderator of this entire panel. He is uh, a retired Indian Administrative uh, Service Officer, IAS, with 34 years of vast experience throughout his tenure. He served in various government sectors, including urban development, finance, and environment. Notably, he has held uh, significant positions such as Joint Municipal Commissioner and Additional Municipal Commissioner in Mumbai. Municipal Commissioner of Thane City and Metropol uh, Metropolitan Commissioner in Mumbai. His trends lie in public policy analysis and infrastructure execution. He has been able to raise financial resources of uh, worth uh, USD 4285 million from agencies like ADB, JICA, KFW, AIIB, and NDB. In MMDRDA, he has also created a new organization named. Maha Mumbai Metro Operation Corporate, uh, Corporation Limited for operation and maintenance of the metro services which are being constructed now. He is none other than Mr. R. A. Rajiv, retired IAS, ex-Metropolitan Commissioner, Mumbai. Everyone, please give him a big hand. 
So we are going to have uh, Mr. R. A. Rajiv as the moderator of this panel. Now handing over the mic to the panelist and moderator. Good morning, everyone. My job is very easy. I don't have to speak much, but I have to make my panelists to speak. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kumar Keshoji, for re accepting my request at the last moment and joining this panel because I wanted that this gathering, this audience, should get benefited from your experience in. Uttar Pradesh, where you have implemented uh, uh, metro uh, in Lucknow and in Kanpur in record time. So uh, before we start, let me take you a little bit back in history in the growth of India. <coughs> the rapid urbanization which is happening in India, if you see in 1999, 1991, there were only 23 cities in the country which were more than 1 million and above population. In 2011, it came to 53 such cities in India and it is still growing. We are growing every day. We have become the most populous country in the world. So the point is that as the urbanization is taking place at a fast pace, uh, in the transport sector in urban cities, the congestion is also increasing, environment is getting affected adversely by the congestion, by the po pollution and all. Ten times increase in the registrations per year of vehicles, two-wheelers, four-wheelers in cities happened in India. Against this backdrop, 2014 is a watershed when we can say that in India, the metro rail revolution is started. Till that time, there were only 248 kilometers of metro lines, metro operation being operated in India. After that, the increase has become more than three times in 2022. And it's still growing, more than 1,000 a uh, kilometer of metro rail lines are already approved and under various stages of implementation in the country. This is a huge jump for any country. And more than, I think, 27 cities at present are implementing metro projects in the country. So against this backdrop, let's come to the issue. It's, it's a established fact that metro as a mode of public transportation, the ease, the speed, everything uh, is in favor of it and it should be there in addition to the buses, the non-motorized uh, transportation system for the first and last mile connectivity, we all agree with that. But let's hear from the stalwarts who have been at the helm of affairs either in the private sector providing technology to the metro authorities or implementing those technologies that how they are implementing, how they are uh, doing, because the railway ministry has already declared 2030 as a net zero uh, year to, to, to achieve that. And that is a very, uh, very, very high objective which they have set for themselves. And they are progressing towards that by electrification uh, methods of that. But more than that, during the construction process, in the implementation of different latest technologies in metro, uh, at the technical level, at the engineering level, at using urban renewable energy, how uh, the private sector is responding to that and how uh, different uh, metro authorities are implementing those technologies, we are going to listen from everyone. So uh, before, before we start this uh, panel discussion, I would request from uh, Mr. Beniwal, 
to, to speak for two minutes about what he is doing uh, and how, what environment friendly technologies he is providing to the metro authorities. Mr. Biniwa. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. My name is Neeraj. And Sarah has given me a good opportunity to explain about my company, uh, Emerson Co Plan. Uh, we have been uh, associated uh, with the rail and uh, metro uh, uh, industries quite long time. We have uh, Emerson Co Plan is a U.S. based company and uh, it, it's it's a energy. Uh, Engineering oriented company, we are uh, we are into many space, but climate is also the one of the space where we provide energy solutions to the mobility. And uh, having said this, uh, we put a lot of efforts to develop new products to uh, offer to the rail industry. I just take you back, uh, uh, the rail industry started their cooling system, HVAC, with the reciprocating compressors. And then we developed or we moved uh, railway systems to scroll, uh, vertical scroll compressors we offered and that is already currently using in uh, Shatabdi and uh, Rajdhani. And then we introduced uh, uh, 10 years back uh, horizontal scroll compressors. So it is very difficult to move from uh, the vertical compressor to the horizontal compressors. That will give the uh, a lot of leverage. We reduce the height approximate uh, 190 mm. That gives the uh, this overall reduction in the stack height that offers a lot of uh, advantage uh, to the coach and the industry. So, and uh, we have not stopped here. We also further developed uh, the variable uh, frequency speed compressor. Variable speed compressor, uh, it is very difficult to achieve that uh, in, uh, varied capacity at a different load in horizontal compressors because the oil management is, is very difficult. That will bring a lot of uh, 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 energy saving aspects and uh, the reliability improved and uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, like green energy uh, we can offer through that and uh, it acts like a booster for us and uh, from this uh, uh, I'll take the privilege to I will t uh, share that uh, we are the part of uh, that compressor is being uh, used in Vande Bharat that is currently uh, running. So along with our HVAC OEMs, uh, it, it's a great uh, honor for us uh, to introduce our uh, highly efficient uh, horizontal scroll compressors uh, to uh, Vande Bharat. And uh, uh, having said that, uh, that Emerson is already uh, having a uh, R&D center in India to offer the uh, 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 best solutions and best advancement to the uh, rail industry. So that's how Emerson is connected with the transport uh, segment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beniwal. Uh, this with this introductory remark, I move to uh, Mr. UJM Rao, uh, who is Managing Director of Andhra Pradesh Metro Rail Corporation Limited. I would request you, Mr. Rao, to uh, give your opening remarks before start uh, discussions on the issue. Honorable dignitaries on the dais and of the dais and my dear friends, a very good morning to everybody. This is UJM Rao, I'm IRAS officer presently holding the post of Managing Director of AP Metro Rail Corporation. My colleague, Kumar Kesuji, is a celebrity in the Metro Rail world, whereas I am debutant. I am coming now. I am coming with four projects. One is Visakhapattam Metro Rail uh, project. It is about 76.90 kilometers of, uh, across the length and breadth of Vizag the largest city and the financial city of Andhra Pradesh and Vijayawada, another city, another big city in Andhra Pradesh. 
and we have the light metro rail project in Visakhapatnam and a tram project because it is a tourist place. It is a very noted tourist place. So we are planning for a tram project also that is called Metro Light. And then at Vijayawada it is again a light metro rail system. And in the Vijayawada, Gunturu, Tenali area, in that area we are going with a high speed, semi-high speed uh, uh, suburban rail service. So with these four projects, it's about 40,000 crores. And friends, I would like to tell you that the Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities do not require the big metro rail systems that we are having in Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, etc. In Tier 2, Tier 3 cities, where the population is 30 to 40 lakhs people now and may grow about 40, uh, about 1 crore in a span of 40 years on a normal growth, this system, what we are introducing in Vaisag and Vijayawada, it is a light metro system which is 25 percent lesser costlier than the conventional metro. And this can be upgradable after 35 to 40 years to a higher system, taking to people of population of above 1 crore, 2 crores or so. So, this system we are adapting, being a debutant, I have the advantage of learning lessons from what my colleagues had in the initial years of their construction and operations. And uh, we have come out with a very, very cost-effective light metro rail system in Vizag. Very soon we are starting here. Of course, today's the subject is uh, sustainability of uh, this green mobility. So I would like to pass on to our moderator, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao. Uh, now I am inviting one of the stalwarts of uh, railways, uh, which the railway ministry has given to the metro world in India. So, uh, Mr. Kumar Kesho, who is a good friend of mine also, I had visited his, uh, and I've seen his work in Lucknow, uh, uh, when we were both uh, working with metros. So, I would uh, request him to uh, introduce, focus on what UP has done about the metro projects and uh, how, uh, let's, let's also start the second question also with you, Kesho Sahab, then I'll move to Mr. Rao and Mr. Beniwal, that what sort of eco-friendly, environment-friendly technologies you have used in UP metro? Good morning, everyone. I hope uh, I'm audible. And uh, uh, thank you, Rajiv ji. Um, I have come out of Lucknow Metro and Uttar Pradesh Metro, but still, I would love to talk about it. Um, uh, Uttar Pradesh is a state where uh, metros probably in maximum number of cities are being implemented. I take pride because I'm from Uttar Pradesh. And uh, uh, as far as if I say Lucknow Metro, which was uh, started uh, way back in 2014, and we fully commissioned that 23 kilometer long corridor, which is partly elevated and underground, in just uh, four and a half years. And uh, as an outcome of that, because a project is implemented, government gains confidence that yes, such type of projects can be implemented. So we got two more projects approved which were bigger in size of Lucknow, and uh, then we started Kanpur, and we started Agra also. So incidentally, somebody from UP Metro should have been here to speak about it, uh, but no worries. And um, Kanpur also priority section we started in a very short time, and Honorable Prime Minister himself was there on 28th of December 2021 to inaugurate. Now both the projects are moving. Agra is very pride. It is a two corridor, partly elevated, partly underground. And um, uh, all monuments, we know that it is a Taj, uh, is the crown of the country. 
So uh, Taj Mahal and uh, we have got a station at Taj Mahal. All that is construction is in progress. As regards um, uh, green mode of transport as a metro, uh, um, if I say that metro is probably urban transport, if, uh, as uh, in the beginning it was told how the cities are growing, how they are getting populated. There is a need of an urban transport. And urban transport, which is a mass rapid transit, means more people can uh, travel together. So metros play a very important role into that. How I tell you is that um, uh, uh, per passenger kilometer, if we count the energy which is used by a metro or as compared to other modes of transport, as compared to a motorcycle, it is one-fifth. As compared to car, which is so common in Delhi, it is one by twentieth. So think about it, 20 people will consume that much energy which a car owner himself is driving on a road and uh, consuming the energy. One more important is, this is, this is in respect of the energy. If I come to the operation and maintenance of the metros, cost of ma total operation and maintenance, nearly 35% is the energy cost. So for the metros, or this type of a transport to remain financially or even environmentally sustainable is of paramount importance because 35% is the cost of energy. So if you start saving something in energy, it is wonderful. So in Uttar Pradesh Metro, uh, Rajiv Ji, which you asked the question, uh, we went more and more uh, uh, precast construction in the factories. As a result, our energy consumption during construction was less. And uh, if I come to the systems, then uh, we were already talking about, my colleague was talking about the uh, variable frequency air conditioning systems, this, that, all that has been implemented. Trains are regenerative braking, so means nearly 34% is the regenerative braking which we checked and finally ascertained in Lucknow Metro. So means 34% of the energy which is produced uh, during the braking of the system that gets fed back into the system, which can be used by the subsequent trains. So that is another thing. We were, we were the first in Lucknow to go for the regenerative braking in the lifts also. Means when the lift gets stopped, at that time also some friction is created and that energy can go back to the system. So uh, it is the need, it is the pressure on the metros that they have to be more and more green into the operation and maintenance. I'm not saying this because now I have joined DB as an operation and maintenance company, but I'm saying with my background that metros to remain sustainable, they have to be an entirely green project. And um, many other things which we had done were 100% uh, lighting is uh, uh, LED based in the trains, in the stations. Still some of the things are there which we, we should work because that is my uh, view. Uh, technology of escalators. You'll be surprised if uh, I, I'm not an electrical engineer, but uh, probably next time I will present how much an electrical uh, escalator consumes the energy. It's huge. Something needs to be done about that. Somehow escalators' energy consumption should be less. Means there should be lighter escalators which can run easily. Those are the few things which come to my mind immediately. And uh, I'm very happy to share that we took a lot of initiatives towards green. And uh, all the stations of Lucknow and Kanpur Metro are uh, platinum certified green buildings by IGPC. So we are an ISO certified company, Uttar Pradesh Metro Rail Corporation, and I'm very proud of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Kesho. Uh, I, think, I think you have already uh, gone much ahead in UP. <coughs> to achieve the net zero uh, objective. Still, I'll come back to you and uh, from a different perspective, I'll ask you what else can be done to achieve net zero in Metro and even we can, uh, we can be positive towards generating energy and giving it to the society. Uh, let's not only talk about net zero but going even beyond that. Uh, Mr. Rao, uh, what uh, are the environment friendly technologies which Hyderabad or, or, or the Andhra Pradesh uh, metro 
is using and proposed to use and uh, uh, in order to achieve the net zero goal uh, in future. So today, we have been talking about green mobility, green field airports, green, green, green. What is the prominence, what is the importance of this green mobility? The whole world has focused towards the containing global warming. See, the climate change is not, uh, temperatures and ozone uh, levels are not going out of control. And therefore, in 2015, there was a world summit, environmental summit, held at Paris. About 192 nations have participated in that, and they have mulled over the issue. It is a very burning topic that global warming is going beyond control. And there are so many adverse effects by that. So this forum has taken up some re uh, remedial and uh, preventive measures, and it has been documented as Paris Agreement 2015. So India being one of the prominent nation in that, has aggressively gone for a clean and green India completely. The Swachh Bharat is the slogan and uh, home name in India. So we have done a lot on this, not only in words, it is in deeds, we have done a lot in that. Let's uh, go to the roots of the, uh, this for pollution generated uh, areas and all. One is industries, the other one is the crowded city roads and vehicles. And of course, the dumping grounds, unhygienic and unclean dumping grounds and the ill-maintained drainages, mostly the cities and towns it happens. So while, and this pollution is growing day by day because here I have to mention about the India is eight, aiming at third position to become a five trillion economy nation. Thereby the urbanization is going up and down at a fast pace. So we, the population growth in almost all the cities are more than normal. So the civic communities or the infrastructure the municipal authorities have to do are not yet matched to that. Thereby, there is a lot of pollution is coming out. While there is a pollution control board for the industries to control the pollution, there is no authentic tool to measure the how much pollution is generated in the cities out of this uh, public transportation other and other uh, transport vehicles. So the best way is prevention. How to prevent? You can prevent it by introducing EV buses, cars, and uh, EV two-wheelers to some extent, but the ultimate solution for the growing cities is the metro rail system. The green mobility can be achieved in India, in the urban India, by introducing the metro rail systems. This is the reason for the last five years, there is a mission that more and more cities should have the metro rail systems. As per the metro rail policy, the cities which have 20 lakhs and above population can have, and even lesser than that also, 
taking the urban agglomeration, the city outskirts. We are going for metro systems today. It is in 28 cities operational or in the active con uh, construction stage. And the target for the next five years is sent 75 cities in, the, in India. This has been one of the item in the Gati Sekti scheme. So we, we are in uh, Andhra Pradesh going for metro rail systems at Visakhapatnam and Vijayawada. So I was mentioning in the earlier also about the light metro system. It comes with the sustainability. See, the cost of metro, metro cannot be on roads. Practically, it is not possible because already the roads are not wider and uh, already crowded with uh, all road vehicles. So we have to create another path by an elevated track. So most of the cities are having elevated track and some core cities, they have gone for underground also. One kilometer, the cost is today 250 crores for an elevated metro. If you go for 30, uh, meter, 30 kilometer, so it will be huge. So the first question comes, how to make it sustainable? How to make it profitable? Not profitable, at least it is not loss making. In many cities you see the state transport uh, corporations are in losses. Though there is city buses, there are losses. When that was in losses, how we can make the metro rail system sustainable and have comfortably run without losses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I have a small presentation to just what it, please. this thing anyway anyway just i will i will tell so one more thing i wanted to tell about the sustainability because we are we are here in a forum to discuss practically yes, and to resol make resolutions a few, few points to the government to the regulatory authorities to implement to simplify the procedure otherwise it is a waste we need not talk much and much about the system, how to construct and all that. Now the topic is sustainability. So on the sustainability, I have brought some three, four points which I wanted to discuss with all the colleagues here. Uh, so it's a small presentation. Of course, most of the things I have spoken. So I, would, uh, I will give it to Rajiv sir, the moderator here. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rao. Uh, uh, before we start with your presentation, uh, let me ask Mr. Beniwa one uh, final comment on your HVAC uh, system and other systems. Tell me whether you are uh, developing all these technologies using renewable energy or the regular energy system. Because if you are using renewable energy to, to uh, energize all these systems and provide it to the this thing, uh, it will be much more uh, going towards the net zero objective than, and much more futuristic in nature. Uh, is there any thought going on on that? Uh, Rajiv sir, I think you asked a very, it's a need of our uh, industry to look for uh, some uh, renewable energy kind of uh, solution. But uh, uh, currently, uh, we moved a lot uh, uh, 
from fixed speed uh, compressors to the variable speed uh, compressors. So uh, I'm just uh, sharing, uh, I think we have traveled a lot, but renewable solution is uh, yet to become. Uh, I think the uh, work is on the uh, engineering team. We have a, uh, we have a good pool uh, of our engineers uh, uh, working out there in uh, US and Europe as well. They're, they're trying to, uh, to bring some solution. I think some hydrogen based uh, uh, metros are running uh, uh, in Japan, I heard. But uh, I think uh, in cooling system, it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, it will take some more time to bring that solution. But uh, in, in terms of green uh, mobility, like uh, if we worked on maintenance part as well, if we improve the maintenance, that will also contribute to the green mobility. So uh, I have experience in China. Uh, these people are putting uh, this inverter uh, variable speed uh, uh, solutions uh, with the monitoring devices. So that uh, inverter or variable speed solution offer a lot of advantage uh, over the fixed speed, which is currently running. So uh, you, you will have the history of the uh, uh, fluctuation and the failures. That will save the downtime, and you will improve the uh, time there. So uh, that's how we can uh, save the time and uh, save the energy. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the variable speed solution will offer a lot of advantage. So I think our country should adopt and uh, follow. Uh, I think uh, we are the market leader in India uh, to providing all the solution to our HVAC OEMs. So currently we are using in uh, Vande Bharat and uh, all metros like Pune, Mumbai, Delhi. So we are offering our solutions to them. OK, Thank, thanks, Mr. Benival. I'm, I'm really very sorry, uh, Mr. Rao, that uh, we are running short of time for this final discussion. So uh, in your next session, when you are presenting uh, the other subjects, you can, you can use this presentation also. I'm, I'm really uh, feel. Uh, one last word should come from uh, Mr. Kumar Keshav, because uh, with his experience and all, I would request you to advise the metro authorities and the private sector which is present here, what is the future of ach not only achieving net zero but going beyond that and make this green and sustainable technology very, very user friendly uh, and urban centric. How, how this can be achieved? Some golden words from your mouth. Not the golden words, but only some suggestions which come to my mind. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, requirements of the metros from because there are designers, there are system designers of the metros. We have to optimize the requirements of the metros. Uh, how should I say it? That requirements of a train, requirement of the redundancies in the system, can those be reduced? Because ultimately, if you are going for net zero means, your requirements in the operation and maintenance should come down. This is the idea. So means redundancies, can they be optimized? Can station designs be optimized? Another thing which comes to my mind is, we are all going for water-cooled chillers and others. Now, in net zero, water and energy, both the things have to be same. So uh, why not to go for a combination of air-cooled and water-cooled chiller, something like that? That is another thing which comes to my mind. Probably underground metros, the requirement of air conditioning is huge. So if that much is the requirement of water, probably water is also an environmental issue at the moment. So that is another thing which comes to my mind. Then uh, one more thing which comes to uh, idea uh, as an idea, because ultimately metros companies or the operators, they have to adopt these energy efficient technologies. There has to be an incentive for it. Right now, earlier we used to have the carbon uh, credits for it. So carbon credits, when I was in Delhi Metro, we got the carbon credits for it, whatever technologies we used. But later on, that also got removed. So me, it is coming now. That is wonderful, because that's what I'm thinking, that there should be an incentive for the industry to come up with the better technologies and for the operator or the metro agencies to adopt those technologies. So carbon credits can be an incentive, which people will certainly go for the better technologies. That is another way if we are heading towards uh, net zero, which is the aim of every one of us. 
Um, what more uh, escalators already I mentioned about? And uh, my general feeling is that uh, metros are uh, systems are little over designed. And uh, probably we can simplify them. How, how should I say, if we go to a mall or an airport, you go T3 terminal, you find only escalators. You don't find the staircases visible so frequently. But when you go to the stations, there are the guidelines for the fire, where you have got escalators also and stairs also, at every place. Which, according to me, doesn't make sense. So much space is created for those staircases, station widths go up, uh, wide, sorry, and then uh, if volume goes up, so obviously the air conditioning requirements will also go up. So if we are going for the net zero, we have to probably rethink a review of these requirements, whether actually they are required or not required. So that will be my, uh, just a suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, all the panelists here with me, Mr. Beniwal, Mr. Rao, and Mr. Kumar Kesho, for a, a very, uh, not only the, the, the present situation we discussed, we've also discussed about what we can do in future. Some of the things which remain to be mentioned is like using solar uh, systems at the rooftop of the stations for lighting, lighting not only these stations, but some of the air conditioning systems and everything. Uh, doing the water conservation structures at every station also can help you in recycling water and all those things. So there are a few uh, more small, small uh, additions which most of the metros, I think Mumbai Metro has done these two things, is doing on uh, those lines. So I just mentioned that to you. Uh, I don't think there is uh, any time which has remained for questions, but at, on the sidelines during coffees, all the panelists will be available. You can have individual questions to them and uh, s solve your uh, doubts and sort out your doubts. Thank you so much. And uh, the, now the mic is to you. Thank you. Can we all give a huge round of applause to all the panelists and moderator we have? What a session to recall. And uh, there is always the scope of one-to-one uh, -one discussions, one-to-one -one conversations. So uh, once we are done with the panel, we all will be there and we will be talking, greeting, meeting. And now is the time when we are going to felicitate the speakers. For that matter, I would request the presence of Mr. Arunesh Bharti, Associate Vice President, BU Head, Rails and Structural Steel Exports. Everyone, please give him a big hand as he makes his way. Uh, you all can raise as we want to thank you for your valuable time. Can we have the mementos, please? We're going to start with Shri UJM Rao. Can we have the memento? Next up, we have Sri Neeraj Beniwal. Okay. So this, I think I was And we have Shri Kumar Keshavji. And up next, we have Shri R. A. Rajiv. Thank you. We can have a group photo as well, no? Yes?
Thank you, gentlemen. It was really amazing having all of you on board. We are looking forward to have one-to-one -one discussions with each one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together for all the gentlemen we have on the stage? Thank you.